Say cheese. Oh, go ahead. So those were the first uh, first couple shots through the Konica Hexar AF. Uh, one thing I did notice is that this camera has what's called the sticky shutter button where you can focus onto something and when you hit the shutter button nothing happens. That's disappointing. I mean I'm obviously going to have to send it in to get it cleaned and serviced. So uh, that's an additional expense, but I did get this for a pretty decent deal. Nonetheless, I am still happy with the photos that are coming out of it. First time I shot the camera, I shot it on aperture priority at f2, thinking that that was the smart aperture mode, essentially that I'm sure you've heard about on these cameras. Uh, so rather than the camera automatically adjusting the aperture and keeping it as close to the desired value, on the uh, on the dial there just went crazy at f2 which unfortunately for me had a pretty significant loss of sharpness in some of the bigger landscape shots that i did uh, as well as overexposing the film however i used portrait 800 for my first time around which is pretty versatile so i was able to fix it all in post and uh, it ended up looking pretty good next up what i did was a uh, shoot at the seattle fair fremont fair is what they call it so i walked around with my girlfriend and we took photos and had some food it was a good time the one thing this camera did struggle with again was the sticky shutter button i would compose a shot focus adjust the frame and then by the time i went to take the shot it wouldn't take it so by the time I had to take it again, uh, the shot had moved on or the person had moved or, you know, as we were walking, I walked past it and it was gone. So that was disappointing. I did get some good results off of it. Uh, I ended up shooting Port for 160 for that with a Konica ND4 filter. Pretty neat. Uh, it reduces it by two stops. So when I was shooting Portra at 160, it was more like Portra at 40. It may seem like a pretty low ISO, but however, the sun uh, was pretty bright through the overcast, so it ended up working out in my favor. I did have uh, one or two blurry shots, but uh, that's to be expected when you're running a ND4 filter on 160 film. Um, I didn't take too many shots with the flash on this camera, maybe five or six. Uh, I'll show those now. Me and my friends drove over to uh, a spot in Seattle, a shipyard, and took a few photos, so I used the flash there. I believe it's a rear curtain flash, so it goes off at the end of the exposure, which can sometimes leave a good amount of blur, especially if you're thinking that the shot has already been taken. It's just weird with the timing on how the flash goes off to when you press the shutter button. The shutter's quiet on the camera, so you don't exactly know when it took a photo. You can really only tell from when the film is winding, uh, when you can feel it in the camera, especially if you're in a loud environment, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Great for street photography because no one necessarily knows that you took a photo. Bad because you don't know that you took a photo. So here at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few extra shots that I took with the camera. Again, this is really just a first impression. Uh, I'd like to get the shutter fixed and maybe the aperture dial cleaned before I make any final judgment on it and decide if I'm going to keep it or not. Most likely, I will keep it just because of its history, glass quality, and compactness. You can carry it around and the autofocus is pretty nice when it works. So. I think I'm going to stick with it for a while. Thank you for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of these photos. <laughs>